quarter of a mile, keep right to continue towards Tuns Lane, A355. Keep right. of a mile at the roundabout take the first exit onto the m4 slip road to london heathrow airport In a quarter of a mile, merge onto M4. Yeah, 
be uh, self-isolating or who might be uh, vulnerable. And it's just made life for a five to 11 year old really difficult. The weather, a cold and frosty start. In two miles, at junction three, take the A312 exit to Harrow, Hayes. Whether you're searching for kettlebells, or boxing gloves, how you pay matters. Visa, a network protecting your payments online. This is LBC, from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Andrew Castle. Good morning to you. It is uh, three minutes past seven. We'll go through all the papers uh, in a little bit. I wish I could bring some uh, good, some good news uh, this morning, but really we're going to sort of bang on about similar things that we've been banging on about for ages because there's nothing that this government either can do or are going to do um, more than they have. At the moment, anyway, I don't know. We've got to know something a bit later on. Perhaps Rishi Sunak got it wrong. Perhaps he got it right. I don't know. Perhaps we've got so much debt because of the way we responded to COVID and the uh, massive demand that came after COVID uh, and, and pushing energy prices as supply outstripped uh, or demand outstripped supply. Perhaps, perhaps it means we, we're just going to see rising prices for the uh, next year, year and a half or so. And there's nothing we can do are we just to uh, are we just to give up and accept that people are going to fall into in, in, into poverty uh, there are various ways to describe fuel poverty what we know is people are heading for it in their droves it's a nightmare it might be described as those spending more than 10 percent of income on on fuel or it might be even more accurate to say fuel poverty is um aligned with how much you think about it and how much you worry about it. The general rise in anxiety around how you're going to pay the bills. Interestingly, my wife was out yesterday. We're preparing for the arrival of um, some... In a quarter of a mile at Junction 3, take the A312 exit to Harrow, Hayes. But she was speaking to somebody... Uh, she was looking for a microwave, actually. Sophia was speaking to, to somebody in, in, a, in a pretty big shop yesterday and they, she said, this woman in there... Exit at Junction 3. In this week. And I know it's half term week for many, but I just wonder if people are just thinking about paying future bills and just tidying their belt. It's all very well having to go at somebody that you think is... In right. a quarter of a mile at Cranford Parkway Interchange, take the fourth exit onto the parkway, A312. Earning 100 grand price. If he's worried, how about if you're earning 20? Or if you're earning 25. It's difficult for everybody. Is there anything that can actually be done here? Well, Peter Smith is Director of Policy and Advocacy at the Fuel Poverty Charity National Energy Action. Peter, you have been busy and you're going to be busy for quite some time. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Andrew. Thanks very much for having us on. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Um, got any solutions or are we just whining? <laughs> well, I certainly um, think that the Chancellor could do more and we've been very clear about where there are opportunities to strengthen or build on what the, the government have already published. Overall, we feel that the council tax mechanism uh, could skip out um, supporting uh, over 600,000 low-income households um, who live in slightly higher bands because of the sort of subjective nature of the rate. Exit the roundabout onto the parkway. Remind me on the council tax thing because I haven't got that piece of paper out. Was that the two hundred pounds that we have to give out? That's the hundred and fifty. Oh, that's the one fifty straight on. Yeah. Continue on the parkway for one mile. Um, rebate, yeah. you know, which kicks in from April, and then some some months later, uh, following uh, as we know, fifty percent increase in bills in October, the heat now pay later rebate element of this kicks in, so the money off your off, off your bill. And as yeah. I mentioned, that's a loan, uh, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that, uh, well. The government will um, say that it's not a loan, but everybody else thinks it's a loan. Well, if you, you, borrow, if you get given money and then you have to give it back, that's a loan. There's no interest on it, but it's a loan. Exactly. It? Well, that's, uh, that's uh, where most people are 
reached in terms of uh, what, what they call it. We call it a heat now, pay later rebate. Um, but you're right, it will need to be paid back and it will need to be paid back over five years in a very regressive manner. Uh, it will come out of the standing charge, which for prepayment meter customers in particular will be very, very difficult. Uh, standing charges need to be paid before energy uh, units of energy can be accessed. So this could do more harm than good. And our first real call to the Treasury has been, don't do that, don't create more of a challenge for people, particularly prepayment meter customers, and, and treat that as a grant for those type of households. Um, we know that about half of, or more than half of the people that are on prepayment have incomes below 18 thousand pounds per year and are already very much more likely to be in debt significant energy debt to their energy supplier so uh, mandating that they'll take this uh, support uh, and repaying it uh, could be pretty disastrous for those households that's the, the first port of call and then you look at what are what other things that, um, that, that, that the government could do now they've decided to create their new schemes from scratch council tax rebate new concept so same with the eat now pay later we would very much like them to see them build on existing schemes which are there to particularly support low income and vulnerable households things like the, the winter fuel payment is available just to pensioner households and that can be extended to low income working age households so there is a range of things that they can do just picking up on your point earlier about how this would be paid for um, there shouldn't be any in a quarter of a mile a wagon is roundabout take the second exit and stay on the parkway a312 This is that that should be redeployed to help the poorest households survive this crisis. Yeah, well, no, I understand where, where, where you're coming from uh, with that. Oh boy, I mean, you know, pe people are yearning for any sort of sense of good news uh, at the moment, but the, you know, the fact is the price cap is up 54% and it's likely to go up later on this year. I mean, is there any mechanism by which that won't go up that doesn't involve the government? Exit the roundabout onto the parkway. Continue on A312 for one and a half miles. Is there anything that the government can do, given the mechanisms that are in place now, to say, you know what, it ain't going to happen? Well, uh, I think that there are a range of uh, things that the, uh, that the government can do which um, require more broad coordination, really, rather than uh, spending additional amount of money. The only silver lining uh, is that we're now coming into the sort of all the months, uh, hopefully. Yeah, um, I got snowed on yesterday when I went yeah, to the exactly water. exactly what I was going to say. It doesn't feel like it, does it? Really um, not. I don't know whether it was sleet or snow, but the fact is that, you know, I went home and it was cold. I got, I've, I've got no particular issues with this and it's on my mind, let yeah. alone if I wasn't, if I wasn't, you know, well off. I mean, I just don't know how people live. I, I just wonder if the government or anybody else, I mean, do we really know the scale of what's ahead? I'll tell you who's going to do blimmin' well is the debt recovery people. My God. Well, we're already seeing some uh, evidence that that, that that sort of practice is uh, on, on the increase. And obviously, you know, with energy bills becoming increasingly impossible to afford, afford then that's going to that's yeah. going to surge. But yeah, I, I, I do think that there are opportunities for um, us to do uh, much more. With, and we do know the scale. Sadly, we know that the, the increases that we've just had uh, to the price cap are going to result in 6.5 million households across the UK living in fuel poverty. That's using the 10% that I mentioned earlier. Um, and, and we know that uh, those those households are going to struggle much more than most to, to afford to heat their homes comfortably. And the, the difficulty that we've had with the government's proposals to date is that they've looked to provide sort of universe, shallow universal support. Um, but if you remember what they were saying prior to uh, those announcements, they were looking particularly what they could do to support vulnerable households. And they haven't done that either in terms of uh, the depth of the support that they've provided, or the mechanisms that they've chosen, aren't going to be sufficient to, uh, yeah. to guarantee assistance. For no, it, it, it certainly doesn't feel that way. Peter Smith, thank you very much indeed for joining us on LBC this morning, Director of Policy and Advocacy at the Fuel Poverty Charity. It's called National Energy Action. Uh, let's speak to Malcolm Grimston, Research Fellow at the Energy Department at Imperial College London. Malcolm, uh, good morning to you. Um, I, I, can I just check that we've got your mic up and running? I beg your, uh, beg your pardon. It's probably. It might be us, it might not be. Have we got you? It was, work. it was working earlier. Malcolm, we absolutely, we have you loud and clear. Thank you very much uh, in, indeed uh, for doing um, Bills are very high and they're going to stay that way. Discuss. 
Yeah, that's right. So in, in any capital intensive industry, in other words, an industry which re requires huge investment from time to time, you get this cycle of uh, investment goes in, so prices come down, then people begin to consolidate, they don't invest in the kit, prices go back up again, and that sends the signal to uh, invest. And there are some benefits of high prices, we, we need to be clear. One is it makes us take energy efficiency a lot more seriously. So in Japan, although the unit cost of electricity and, and power is, and, and energy is very high in Japan, so they've got no reserves of their own, the actual power bills in Japan are not all that high because they use energy much more effectively. Uh, and secondly, we need the signal to go to the big energy companies to start investing in a way they really haven't been doing for the last 20 years. So I think rather than trying to artificially put a, put a cap on energy prices, which will have some unintended consequences, it really is about supporting those who are facing the greatest trouble, which needs to be done in some way through the benefits system. Something